It's here guys, the F-Sport LS 500. Is it better than the standard LS in any way? Stay tuned to find out. I'll give you my impressions. Hit that subscribe button. Let's go. The 2018 LS500 F-Sport. It's an awesome looking vehicle. I love the looks of this car over the standard LS500. I love the wheels. I actually like, now these wheels are a little bit dirty. It's a used car. Yeah, it's used. It has like a thousand miles on it. But um, these wheels, in my opinion, look great. We'll get a close up in a little bit. I love the aggressive F-Sport spindle grill with the lacy design. We'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit closer. The lights are exactly the same as normal LS, which is perfectly okay with me because the eyelash check mark looks great. The triple beam headlights look great. Um, you know, I don't know how I feel about this chunky end. I think the center uh, spindle grill looks perfect, especially with this darkened chrome uh, around it. Uh, but this one, I don't know, it doesn't quite do it for me. Um, I feel like this is over stylized. This is a little bit too big. But overall, I still think it looks better than the normal LS500, uh, at least in the front. Again, the wheels are stunning. I mean, this car looks, and this black, black, uh, it's probably, what do they call this, um, obsidian. This particular paint color is probably called obsidian. Um, now these, these wheel, these F-Sport wheels, you can only get them on the F-Sport. They look awesome, especially when they're clean. I apologize, they are dirty. Um, like I said, this is a used vehicle. Um, but if you want to know, they're 245 by 45 RF20, so 20 inch wheels. Now this has the upgraded uh, front calipers um, and brake rotors. So I want to say they're six piston monoblock aluminum calipers right there. Uh, and they're 15.7 inch rotors in there. Uh, and they're, they're supposed to have better cooling than the standard uh, brakes. Now, these brakes don't feel any better than the normal LS500 brakes, in my opinion. They feel exactly the same, which is perfect. They're the best brakes I've ever felt. Of course, you have that little F-Sport uh, emblem on the side of the car. And you can just kind of get a scope. This car is very long. Driving this car, it feels like you're in a, kind of like the Batmobile, this particular car. is It's black, it's very sleek. And the Batmobile is a huge, long vehicle with a really long hood, so it kind of feels like a Batmobile to me. Um, there's enough power to definitely feel like a Batmobile, even though some of you guys might, some of you guys might gripe this car does not have enough power, um, but it, it's got enough for me. I'll, I'll tell you that much. The 414 horsepower. I think the back looks very classy. They didn't over stylize it. Now I think they could have done a little bit more of an aggressive job. Um, especially maybe add like some sort of rear diffuser down there because the F-Sport is all about you know being a little bit more aggressive with its styling uh, but overall I, can, I mean it's, it looks perfect to me these taillights are very well detailed so you can see all the L's in here on the right side they're backwards L's right of course here's your backup LED light on um, this would be your LED blinker here all-wheel drive that's pretty much the only LS we get here in the Midwest it's going to be all-wheel drive uh, but this car is absolutely beautiful um, some of you might not think so some of you prefer the more subdued styling of the past generations of LS uh, this car really doesn't look like any other LS ever made and that's okay with me um, I, you know I like Lexus pushing the envelope a little bit they got known as the old grandpa car brand the old balls car brand that you know never pushed the envelope this car does um, now it's not quite quite like a Mercedes or BMW in terms of a uh, push in the envelope but guys rest assured this car is gonna be reliable um, it's gonna last you forever as long as you take care of it and it's never gonna leave you stranded typical Lexus uh, reliability class elegance luxury and sophistication I could keep going underneath the, the hood of course we have the very first twin turbo engine from Lexus uh, this V6 three and a half liter produces 414 horsepower and around 440 foot-pounds of torque she's got a lot of power do you need more power than this absolutely not do I prefer the V8 and the previous uh, LS's I actually do it's a smoother engine it has more uh, a little bit more torque 
um, and the places you want it. Now this car has more torque than any other LS ever made, but its responsiveness isn't quite the same as what a V8 feels like. Um, but presentation's pretty simple in here. It looks really clean and I do appreciate Lexus uh, for making it very clean, giving their, their emblem in there as well as letting you know, hey, we're proud of our very first twin turbo. So I think they did a great job with the engine of presentation under here. The 2018 LS 500 F Sport Edition. So this interior is unique to the F Sport. <clears throat> you can't find, for example, obviously the F Sport headrest or design on the seats on the standard model. Or I should even say, you know, the, the more expensive luxury high-end versions of this car as well. You're not going to be able to find this interior. Um, so <clears throat> this diamond plate interior here on the door, um, like I said, only on the F Sport. But this this material is, is very similar to the material that you find in the GS350 F Sport. Uh, beautiful stitching with the Alcantara right there. More stitching on the armrest. Um, <clears throat> speaking of these armrests... This is what I love about the LS. These doors are crazy because they kind of bow outwards to give you more space on the inside. And this armrest is literally floating out here. Uh, again, watch my you know original video on the LS. That, that one was um, <clears throat> definitely a higher priced LS than this one. Uh, so the interior was even more luxurious. Um, this is plenty luxurious for me, I can tell you that. Uh, we're gonna fire up the car here. Now, a couple things you're going to notice is that compared to the other LS I was in, the let's just call it the luxury LS 500, the tack oh, volume, and that's what I love. This volume knob is awesome because it's also inter integrated with the tuning here, volume here, tuning here. Of course, we have the same 12.3-inch uh, uh, infotainment screen. But back to the center here, we have the standard F-Sport uh, I'm assuming this is also the sliding, yeah, the sliding tachometer. And you can see it can even give you uh, boost information because again, the LS500 is a twin turbo V6. All your information, I would probably just keep it on miles per gallon, um, but uh, I want to give you guys an idea of uh, the different sport modes. So, and just to, re just to remind our guys, the sport mode is up here at the top. The drive mode selections up here, I call these the antlers, and right here is going to be your traction control as well as the snow option there. Um, but back here, here is going to be your comfort mode, eco mode, you press down for normal, you twist up for sport mode, and there is sport plus. So uh, that's the different iterations there, and I'm going to go ahead again and press this pages button because I like, I like having the uh, tachometer front and center into the screen. Of course you have your odometer, lane keep assist, um, other, other stuff will come up here like uh, your radar cruise control, obviously your fuel, as well as what drive position you're in. I love these fobs here, they're very, very high quality. Looking at this F-Sport steering wheel, of course you're only going to find this in the F-Sport model. Good stitching here, uh, as you would expect on a Lexus steering wheel. Huge and very, very uh, luxury feeling um, paddle shifters here. Uh, they feel great. They're very polished and they're going to hold up well over time. They are magnesium. Uh, hopefully you're not getting blasted by the AC. So I love how clean this whole area is. These little lines going all the way across. Now this is, this is the thing I have with, this is the only issue I have with the LS interior as they, they don't, they didn't know what to do with this spot. Uh, they should have put it like another screen or something, but it's just like, I don't know. They didn't know what to put. I wish they would just put Alcantara there. I think that would look good, but they they have a weird little mural there of some sort of artwork. Um, climate control here, only radio buttons, tiny uh, CD player. Of course, you have your Mark Levinson in here. It's going to sound great. It's got like 23 speakers and I don't know over 2,000 watts of power just blows my mind. I'm never going to listen at that uh, loud of a volume. Overhead we have, uh, of course, your nice sunroof. And on the inside of it is Alcantara. This is all that super suede material. A nice leather trimmed and wrapped handle here. Um, 
I love these handles. Now these handles are standard in the LC as well as the upcoming ES. Uh, so you'll see these more and more in Lexus vehicles. Here is the awesome center, um, you know, storage area. And if you press the button on this side, it opens up from this side. So it always blows my mind. I like playing around with it. We have a tiny little slot here for probably, you know, like garage cards and things like that. Here is gonna be a tray that moves around or you can be removed. Uh, inside we have some sunglasses. Um, they're not mine. My, my uh, supervisor is currently driving this car <clears throat> until we sell it, which I would be doing the same thing if I was in his, his position. And connectivity in here, 12 volt, your RCA, 12 volts in here, auxiliary and USB. And you have two USBs just in case you need to plug multiple USBs in. I don't know when you would ever need that, but hey, it's there. Um, but that sums it up kind of for the, the front end of things. Uh, let's check. Okay. We're looking, hair's getting longer, guys. It's getting there. It's getting there. Uh, and we have a huge, nice, bright light right above here. And of course, a, a speaker. Let me close this so that light doesn't stay on. And then we have a huge speaker here um, because when you have 19 speakers or whatever, how many speakers this car has, uh, you're gonna be able to hear it from every single possible, it's like surround sound on the next level. So uh, let's go ahead and get in the back. Oh, real quick, these seats are very, very comfortable. The bolstering's extraordinarily uh, stiff, but comfortable at the same time. So pretty good job, uh, Lexus. I've never been in an uncomfortable Lexus seat. So let's go ahead and get in the back. Getting in the back, we got a little child booster seat back here, just in case you need to throw a kid in. I'm sure a kid is gonna have plenty of room back here. Uh, one thing that jumps out at me is the large drivetrain uh, bump right in the middle. So unfortunately that's there. You look you look, and you got a nice 12 volt connector if you need to charge your, your stuff back here, but I'm gonna close the door. I love this little cheese grater like uh, material that goes over the Mark Levinson speaker. I think it's a really nice touch. Uh, of course, more of that F Sport trim here. Seats are extremely well detailed. Looking above in an LS, guys, you're gonna have the drop top vanity mirror. Remember, it can go all the way down if you need it to look lower. What are you guys looking? You guys are sick, you're sick. Mark Levinson, now this is interesting. You see the Mark Levinson back here on the speaker but you don't have it here and you don't have it up there on the, the speaker above the driver or passenger seat. So that's kind of interesting where they selected to, to brand and put the Mark Levinson. Uh, but these seats, guys, I'm gonna move this uh, booster seat here. These seats are very, very similar to the front seats. And this middle seat here is pretty comfortable, although remember you're, you're gonna have some limited leg room if you're putting someone in the middle. Folding it down. Now, this is not the super high-end luxury model. We don't have the LCD screen here that gives you quad climate control and massaging rear seats and reclinable rear seats and, you know, sunshades on the windows that are automated. It's, but we do have a rear sunshade and I can move that seat forward if I need to. So looking back here, I'm gonna pull this sunshade up. It's going, it's going. And she made it. Okay, I'm gonna put it back down because I want this car to be in the same condition or the same relative condition that um, uh, my boss drove it to work in today. The back of the seat is exquisite, unbelievable. Now, there is some hard touch plastic here, um, <clears throat> which probably just gives some firmness to these racing like seats up front. Um, this mat pocket is huge. I call this like the large mouth bass of mat pockets. Um, now, it has kind of this suede material, which looks really good, but it's gonna collect, as you can see, like, you know, footprints and things like that, because it's, it's a suede-ish material on the outside. So, that's kind of unfortunate. It looks great, but it's just gonna be, you know, a collector of imperfections. But this map pocket, it's like the nicest, largest map pocket I've ever seen. Not quite as detailed as that um, Acura I was in yesterday in the T uh, TL or sorry, the RLX, but, Pretty good job. We have vents right here and vents right here on the side column as well. But that kind of sums it up for the back. Um, again, in here, I, I, I lied, it doesn't sum it up in the back. We have nice 2.1 fast charging USBs back here. I like that. Um, and then we're gonna have your cup holders right here that you just need to push out and down 
and then you can fit some pretty large cups in there. Uh, but that sums it up for the back seat. Let's go ahead and move on. We have a nice automated trunk lid, beautiful all weather mats that will be in great handy come winter time here in Nebraska. This trunk is not the largest trunk I've ever seen for a vehicle of this size, but it does a good job. Um, we have a relay and fuse box under there, but I'm not gonna get under everything guys and show you what's under here uh, simply because most of you don't care. And then we have a, of course, your standard Lexus first aid kit that here. But you, you know, if you're going on a road trip, this is probably gonna provide plenty of room for you guys. Um, if you're a creeper, I'm sorry, you can't tie people. Well, you could tie them up and they could get out, but um, if you just throw someone in the back here, they're gonna be able to pull this latch. It's glow in the dark and they'll be able to escape, no problem. So uh, the RLX would be a better creeper video, uh, vehicle than this. Uh, we have a nice, light here, a pull down tab here, and of course our button to close the rear latch. Let's buckle up and go guys, the F Sport, we're in the LS500 F Sport. Now, I've driven the standard uh, LS500, that car is an amazing vehicle. As you guys know, if you've seen my other review, I'm expecting this car to be more of the same. I don't expect a huge difference, especially in terms of uh, feel even though this car isn't quite as luxurious as the other one I drove um, this I love the smell of this car you know I don't always say that with Lexus vehicle well any vehicle I should say but the, the smell of this car I don't know if it's the leather or the Alcantara but it just smells like it has a very rich smell to it I feel um, wealthier than I normally do just by smelling this car call me call me weird I am a little weird um, now what I remember of the other LS that I drove is that it had like the best brake feel I've ever felt in the car. Now this has bigger, uh, bigger brakes up front, so I am expecting it to even be better, but I don't know how it can be better. You know, I, I guess it, anything can be better, but those brakes on the normal LS are already the best brakes I've ever felt. Um, the steering on this is perfect the steering wheel feels perfect this brake pedal let's get into it they feel perfect as expected now that wasn't a hard brake but that's just normal city braking um, and now that I'm expecting the and I'm gonna get into this in standard mode or just normal mode um, initially to kind of get an idea of what the throttle response is like and then of course in the Sport Plus mode. Now I haven't been in a Sport Plus mode in this particular, well the LS because this is the first F Sport. The S Plus mode um, is only available in F Sport models. You can get Sport mode in your normal uh, Lexus vehicles or at least most of them. Um, but this particular car has the, you know, dynamic adjustable suspension um, and it has, it changes the, the throttle response, it changes the steering feeling. Unfortunately, this car does not have that rear wheel steering like you would have in the rear wheel drive version, but. She goes. No, I didn't really have it. I mean, there's a, a Jeep, what is this? I don't even know. It just says Jeep Limited in front of me. It's probably like a Cherokee. Um, but she goes, it doesn't, I don't know if it's, quite as smooth and buttery feeling as like the LS430 or the LS460 with the V8. Uh, it's gonna take some time for me to get used to this twin turbo V6. Speaking of Lexus, did you guys see the SC400 that just passed me and Lexus V8? That's a cool car, that SC400. I've always wanted to drive one. You don't see very many of them. So there is a little bit of a delay in this standard mode of of this vehicle so I press the throttle down it goes it goes fairly well but it doesn't like to downshift that well um, and it just kind of holds the gear it's in and, and it boogies there um, but we're gonna we're gonna turn it to sport plus mode and just kind of see what the the throttle response is like how this car feels in general uh, three two one it doesn't feel much different I would say it downshifts a little bit quicker um, but this car does not feel nearly as uh, 
vortex sucking as let's say that CLS 550 that, that I was in, that twin turbo V8. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I feel like this car could actually use more power. Now I know a lot of its competitors are far more powerful than this car. Um, this car does zero to 60 in, I wanna say the upper fours, mid to upper fours. Just getting into the throttle again. It's got a good amount of shove, but it's not downshifting as much as I'd like it to. So I'm gonna paddle shift it um, and see where it goes from there. Yeah, okay. So, to get the, the most out of this engine, you cannot rely on the sport modes or the automatic transmission to do it for you. Because this car wants to hang out in like three to 4,000 RPM. If I punch the throttle, it, it doesn't downshift as quickly as I'd like it to. And I'm in Sport Plus, mind you, and it it's just not as good as it should be. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I, I usually don't nitpick on Lexus vehicles, but this car in its, in its Sport Plus mode isn't nearly as aggressive as it should be. I have to use, and I'm, I typically never use paddle shifters in a, a sport-oriented car because usually the car just downshifts so well, it's very, very quick and knows my intention. This car, hammer down. I don't know, it just, it's just not doing it for me. Um, you know, I had, I had pretty high expectations coming to this vehicle because the LS500 that I drove prior to this was so well-rounded. This being the F-Sport, I, I was expecting it to be more sport-oriented in its feel. Um, but you have to, you're going to have to do the sportiness for it. For example, here we go downshift a couple times. There's fourth. And gosh, it's fast. Don't get me wrong, it's fast. But you have to tell it to be fast in a more direct way. Slamming on the throttle is not going to do it. You have to downshift with the paddle shifters. That is a cool Porsche 911. I don't even know what to call that paint color. It's kind of like a pewter gray. Pewter gray is what I'm naming it. Wow, that was a cool car. I wish you guys could see it. I'll probably post a picture of the car, uh, a picture of the paint color I saw in the 911. Um, I'm excited to get into the brakes because I thought the LS500's brakes were already perfect as they were. So we're getting off here on the off-ramp. Again, this car on the freeway, now I've been nitpicking the transmission and its unwillingness to downshift and, and get into the power modes <clears throat> or the power band of this car. Um, but this car is very, very smooth on the freeway, uh, very low road noise. Visibility is not as good as I would like it to be. Um, it's not nearly as good as the LS460 um, or probably the, the Mercedes S-Class, but it's still good enough in my opinion. And I'm done with that Sport Plus mode. Um, it didn't do anything for me. I can't believe I'm saying that because of the F Sport and the LS460, I felt like that was the perfect version of that car. Gosh, oh, okay, she's fast. Yeah, no, S, S, Sport Plus mode is completely irrelevant in this particular car. The paddle shifters that come in every single LS car or LS500, so not really necessary because like I said, the paddle shifters are gonna, gonna be how you get the most out of this car. Um, handling, oh my gosh. I think this, this car handles immaculate for a vehicle of this size. This all wheel drive, oh my gosh, there's so much grip. A lot of grip in this vehicle, it handles superbly. Is it any better than the standard LS? Probably, I'm gonna twist it in Sport Plus mode and get into it just a little bit around the turn. It's definitely stiffer in Sport Plus mode. Um, but no one drives the LS to be like a track car. Oh gosh, this thing handles like a beast in Sport Plus. But in Comfort mode or Custom mode, or sorry, the Standard mode, it handles just fine. I don't feel like it needs to handle any better. 
although it does stiffen up a little bit more in that Sport Plus mode. Um, but I'm excited to give you guys my impressions here uh, now that we've arrived at the lake. Do a quick acceleration run here um, so you guys get an idea of some real world acceleration. I'm gonna go really slow so this Jeep has some room in front of me. I don't think there's anyone behind me. And I'm gonna keep it on the speedometer here. Now we're going uphill. She's got plenty of shove. I mean, there's 60, so you guys can do the math on there. Uh, but that's a practical application, um, picking up speed on the on-ramp uh, to merge into traffic. So you're never gonna feel like you need more power. You may want more power. Uh, for some reason you might want more power, but you know, in the F Sport, it's not about more power. It's about a little bit more aggressive styling, um, a little bit better handling, and a little bit better braking. Those things are imperceivable to me. So, um, but that, that kind of sums it up for the acceleration. It's the exact same as the LS500, non F Sport. The braking feels exactly the same. The steering feels exactly the same. Um, when you put in Sport Plus mode, when you're pushing it hard in the corners, I would say it does feel a little bit stiffer, but it's totally not necessary. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, time for my F Sport rant, uh, if I haven't been ranting already, which I probably have been. So in general, the F Sport lineup for Lexus is a little lacking. To me, it just seems like a visual upgrade, like a, uh, a trim upgrade. Um, the cars definitely look more aggressive on the outside. They put in something like the NX, they put more aggressive bumpers on there. Um, this particular car, the, the, the grill is completely different. Um, but on the inside, I mean, of course you have like the F-Sport steering wheel, the F-Sport pedals, the F-Sport seats, etc., etc. To me, the, it's just a, an upholstery or exterior design difference the cars even though they have a more expensive upgraded brake system in a lot of times and more expensive upgraded adjustive damping uh, suspension it doesn't really feel that much different um, so I feel like if you want the F Sport car only go for it if you like the visual upgrades. Don't go for it thinking it's gonna be a sportier car. It has no more power. Around the track, it's not gonna be percep per perceptibly quicker in any way. Um, now the F lineup is a different story altogether, like the RCF, the GSF, etc. Those cars are, are actually sport cars. The F sport lineup is, all it is is really just a trim. And I feel like if Lexus wants to keep this around without being pushed to irrelevance because really it's not any different than the normal car per perceptively unless you like the visual upgrade nature of it they need to tweak the motors different that's it just give it give it 25 more horsepower it doesn't have to be much but make it feel like it's actually different besides just the looks gosh these brakes are freaking awesome Oh, the LS brakes. If you haven't driven an LS 500, these are the best brakes I've ever felt in the car. They're just complete butter. Now, this car actually has the squeaky brakes that I've read about. Um, the LS 500 F Sport, for some reason, the compound on the brake pads make, make a squeaking noise on these rotors. It's, I wouldn't call it a defect, it's just I mean, the brakes are working as they should. They're, they're flawless in feel. Unfortunately, they just have a squeaky nature to them. So just keep that in mind that these brakes can squeak um, if you're getting this car. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty high pitched. Uh, but the brakes are amazing. This car is amazing. It's still LS500. I'm probably dogging on it too much because I feel like it could be done uh, a little bit better, a little bit sportier. Um, but I'm gonna end it, end it, guys. I've been talking too long. The LS500 F Sport, it's, gr it's a great vehicle, there's no doubt. Why? Because it's still the LS500. Is it better than the standard LS500 or worth the upgrade on the brakes or the suspension? In my opinion, no. If you're getting this car, you're getting it for the, the different looks over the standard version. The interior is a little bit different. It's more sport oriented. 
I still prefer the the normal interior of the LS, uh, and I prefer the exterior of, the, of this better than the, the normal LS. I think that the S F Sport exterior looks great, as you guys already know my opinion on that. But let me know, guys, would you rather have the more luxury and comfort focused LS 500, or would you rather have this a little bit edgier looking with the bigger brakes um, LS 500 F Sport? I think you can't go wrong with either. I just prefer uh, what this car is at its at its heart, which is a a luxury, huge luxury vehicle. And the F Sport, in my opinion, on this LS 500 doesn't quite live up to um, the F Sport lineage, and it doesn't quite in my opinion, uh, do the same for the LS as the LS 460 F Sport did. So check out my review on the normal LS 500 that I took a review of, um, as well as the F Sport LS 460. Uh, I'm rambling at this point, I gotta cut it short. Uh, subscribe, I'll see you in the comments below.